the whole body is fitly joined together. Um, the definition of fitly is in a proper or suitable manner. The Lord has fit the, the body together properly. There are no parts that are not needed or not in order. And he has set every member where he needs them. The people are held together by what everyone supplies, not just one person. And every part is necessary. There's no parts of the body of Christ that can't, we can do without. And actually this morning on the way to the meeting, we were talking about this in the car, and Seth said, if I had a toe on my head, that would be silly. He said, that's why God put it on our foot. And this is correct. The Lord has set every part where, where it can be the most useful. Um, 1 Corinthians 12, 14 through 18 says, For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, Because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, Because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body, as it hath pleased him. Just because you may not may not be what you think is a major part doesn't mean that you are not needed. God has chosen you, and therefore you are needed to be part of the body, and you are joined to the other members. And all the members are helping the body to function properly and to grow. If it pleases the Lord for you to be in the place that you are, and he has set you there, then it should please us as well. Amen. And all of the parts also have to be healthy. You can't expect a body with a limp leg or a broken arm to function the way a normal one would. Edification cannot take place in this type of environment. We are placed where it pleases the Lord, so let us use what we have been given to be a more effective member and participate in the edifying of the body. Now Brother Matt's going to come up and expound on this text more. Our text this morning is uh, the inspiration for our topic of this year's table, and as a result, I don't think that there's a single text in my sermon that hasn't been referenced at least a dozen times, uh, but it's a good thing, really, that truth never, it's a good thing that truth never wears out then. It's, if, if this was anything else, if we were talking about anything else, then we'd be in trouble, but it's... It, this really, more than anything else, was a confirmation for me that the things that I've gleaned from my text were good. That uh, the, 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 the truth was actually worked out before my very eyes in this, these past few days. That in our assembling together, the body here by our messages, by joints and bands, we, we actually made clear this truth. The body being fitly joined together, together by that which every joint supplies in, in our very midst. We made this, this truth clear. So uh, this truth that we're going to talk about uh, today is an exposition and summary of the purpose of God in Christ Jesus concerning humanity. It, it puts to lie the majority of what is called Christianity in our days. We, we see the focus is on the church. That really is the focus. Um, on, on, on the creation of a mature and a built-up body of individuals who on that day when Christ presents them unto himself will, will accurately represent their Redeemer. They will not just be sinners saved by grace. They will be righteous and holy without blame before him. So they will be a glorious church without spot and wrinkle. They will actually prove themselves worthy of the investment that he put into them. On the day when the bridegroom comes for his bride, they will be prepared and adorned for her husband. See, in the present, this is being worked out through the employment of men upon the earth. The body is being called out in, in mutual fellowship with one another and the Lord. Now, I wanted to uh, um, read the text here, but I wanted to go back a few verses just to kind of see the, the scope of this. He that descended is the same also that ascended far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. Yeah. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come into the unity of the faith. See, this is the direction in which this thing is moving. And of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man. 
unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. And here's our text. From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working, and every the, and the measure of every part maketh increase of the body of the edifying of itself in love. Now firstly, fitly joined together and compacted. Now this fitly joining and this compacting is one of purpose and intention. It, it, it is one like unto the pressure and the, the heat that is a, a base thing such as coal is exposed to that after much time and, and pressure produces a precious stone. See, the, the individual members themselves are not much to behold on their own. That is not to say that they don't hold value. The, the, the materials that you use to make a building, that they may be expensive materials. They, you could use very high quality materials, but by themselves they're not really impressive. It's, it's what they can be used to build that's appreciated. Yes. The, 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 what they come together to make, that is the point. Yes. So by that which every joint supplieth. See, Reese, um, I, I appreciated the way in which he said this, and I, I, I hadn't really seen it in the way that I saw it um, as I was putting this together, that resources are granted to the individual parts. And I, I think that I, b before I had I'd seen it more like this, that the res I, 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 before I'd seen it more like the resources are given to the body parts, but now I see that it is as the parts come together that they're supplied to the working of the whole. The point is that we notice in the text it doesn't say that the members of this are the source of the supply, but that the joint is the source of the supply. Uh, he says it this way in Colossians chapter 2, And not holding the head from which all the body by joints and bands having nourishment ministered. See, even in the human body, we can see the truth of this and that the muscles do not move independently of one another. See, they're connected one to another, bone and tendons joining one another. The, the energy contained within that one muscle, when one walks or flexes their arm, it, that, it's usable. The energy in that muscle is usable because there's a complex network of connecting tendons and tissue that work in unison to allow that motion to take place. See, we can, treat, we can see the truth of this in the way in which God chose to work out his purpose concerning humanity and, and the church and the earth. We know that ultimately the focus of Christ's ministry is not to build saints, but to build the church. It is, it's important that we never see ourselves in respect to God on a, at a primarily on a personal level. I understand that with everyone there is a one-on-one -one on, one -on -one fellowship with God. This is true. But it is important that primarily God chose to do things in the way that he did in view of the purpose which he purposed before the world began, that the church. And uh, Ephesians chapter 2, he said it this way, Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saint and of the household of God. Amen. See, this, this is what he's go looking towards here. This is the purpose. And are built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Now as it concerns the revelation that we've been given, the, the word of God, the gospel, the good news that we've been speaking of this weekend, the, the Lord could have done it this way. He could have just like he did on Mount Sinai, he could have, he could have carved the gospel onto tablets of stone. And he could, have, he could have given these tablets to, stone, to, to Paul and he could have said, here's the gospel, give this to the people. But he didn't do it that way, did he? No. He, 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 uh, it was essential to his purpose that the church would actually be edified and built up by means of its own members through Christ. See, he used Paul, a member in particular, to open these things up. Since the, the revelation wasn't impersonal or, or merely informational. God didn't relate to him word for word what he should say. He actually filtered it through a member of the body. It was essential to his purpose that, um, 
uh, he would be able to uh, um, uh, to be able to through the body minister these things to the body. He actually filtered them through the personality of Paul. See, he was able to expound the truth of the implications of the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. When the brethren met together and they were able to, to hear the things that Brother Paul was able to speak, and he was able to hear of their faith and able to hear of their response, they were being fitly joined together. And, and the joint was where the supply was being realized. He was also able to testify of the effectiveness of faith and demonstrate the work of God in Christ and building his church in his own person. See, he, by his experience of persecution and grief, was able to minister comfort to those who themselves were being persecuted and, and connect it to the purpose of God in Christ Jesus. Uh, just a few verses earlier in uh, Ephesians 4, he specifies also that he gave some apostles and he gave some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints and for the work of the ministry and for the edifying of the body of Christ. Now the writings of the apostles are the means by which God gave unto us the record of his son. Now, how prof profound a thought is it that we actually don't know anything about Jesus outside of what God has revealed through these brethren? Now, their words, along with the prophets who testified of the coming of Christ, are the framework of our knowledge of the purpose of God in Christ Jesus. And that these are actually the only means by which we can reach valid conclusions concerning the gospel. And he, he did it through, through men. Through the body, that's a, that's a profound consideration. Yes, amen. And even if you don't have any earthly acquaintances with which you can fellowship with in the present, every time you read this, the scripture, you are actually fellowshipping with the spirits of just men made perfect. Every time you sing a hymn, every time you read the writings of a saint that's gone on before you, you're being built up by another member. God uses these brothers and sisters that have, that have gone on still as a, a fellow ligament, so to speak, a, a fellow joint to, to, to move the body forward. So in doing this, even in, even in the setting of the foundation, he established the manner of the building, that it is built up a house of living stones who, who aren't simply stacked upon one another, but who are interwoven. See, we have this example even in earthly things that a wall isn't built by simply stacking bricks uh, in parallel stacks next to each other. They're, they're set staggered. Uh, again, as he said before, they are fitly or they're appropriately joined together. They're compacted in a way that they can't be easily broken and, and cast down by, by joints and bands working together. Now, it's remarkable to think about this. That these brethren were given the honor to be the means by which the testimony of Jesus was given unto us. And it's, it's a humbling thing, to, it's a humbling thing to think of this, that we've been joined to the Lord in our new birth to him. And, and God is actually using us, who were once aliens, who, who were once far away from him, to be able to proclaim the gospel that, that through the empowerment of the Spirit, that we're actually bringing people to Christ. That he, he is doing that through us. That is an incredible thing to think about, brethren. Yes. That, it, it's humbling if you think about that, that you who were once aliens, you who were once enemies to the life of God, that, that, that you were able to do that in Christ Jesus. Amen. The fact that the church is the pillar and ground of the truth, that they are the guardian, we are the guardians of the gospel on this earth. It, that itself is a remarkable consideration in consideration to what we once were. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believed. So then, this is according to the effectual working and the measure of every part. Now, we can all uh, testify to this this weekend, brethren, that behold, how good and pleasant is it for brethren to dwell together in unity. Now the words which God used through these brethren who laid the foundation to deliver this message unto us, now in the present, is being opened up by members in particular to the benefit of the whole. 
And he gives the words which the Holy Spirit is able to use unto those who by their willing participation and and his purpose are moved to proclaim the gospel of Christ. And this is the way in which the body is increased. See, those who who speak are edified by what they have seen and, and having the opportunity to express it, those who are here are edified by the receiving of it. And in turn, again, those who, who have spoken are edified by the reception of those who have heard it, and they're comforted, they are comforted to the end that they might be encouraged to continue. Yeah. And the, the, the gifts in the body, although they are differing, are all complementary to one another that we might grow up into Christ in all things. So then ultimately growth on an individual level doesn't happen outside of this exchange between the individual parts of the body. And as we're, we're being conformed into the image of Christ, while we are being perfected, we are aiding others in their perfection. And this is really a, a proper perspective of what it means to be workers together with God. Now, knowing this, take this as an exhortation this morning, brethren, that if this is true, that when every part is working properly, increase happens, make it your business to always have your body part, so to speak, exercised and in good shape. To always have your body part um, ready ready to, to, to work. If, if there's a schism in the body, if, if that's true, if there's a schism in the body, it affects the performance of the whole. Make sure that you're not ever the cause of that defect. Do all that you can to be in good working order for the benefit of the rest of the body. So then, it maketh increase of the body. Now, when we talk about making increase of the body, um, it ought to be obvious that we're not talking merely about an increase of the number of members in the body. Now, this should not be the only thing that we think about when, we're talk- when we talk about growth in the context of the church. So then, what about church growth programs? Now, there's a lot of talk about this in the institution of our day, but we're not talking about the same growth here. We're not talking about pulling bigger numbers. And we're not talking about growing glorified social clubs here. That should be obvious enough, but um, we're talking about a growth in the quality and in the strength of of the members of the body of Christ. Uh, One of the reasons why the professed church is in such a state as it is in our day is because they have neglected to preach the need for this kind of growth. Uh, those in, our, in the, uh, the present generation in the professed church who have been set in the way, they have not been showed the road that lies ahead. If they have been changed at all, uh, they soon wither and they fall off the vine due to lack of nourishment. And in short, the sheep are not being fed. This is not happening. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that people being added to the church is not part of the body increasing. I, I, I'm not naive. I understand that evangelism has to happen, that this is an important part of, of what has to happen. Uh, if nobody was ever added to the body from the time that the apostle wrote these words, then none of us would be here. I understand this. <laughs> It's a vital and necessary thing. But what I'm saying is that when evangelism is inordinately emphasized to the neglect of edifying the people of God, it is absolutely inexcusable. In fact, when we're talking about growth in this context, uh, most commonly, if you were to ask the average congregation, what, what what is considered growth in the faith? I think that most commonly uh, they would probably you'd probably get the answer that to grow is to become more effective in ministering to the world. Uh, I've heard this said many times. I can't count how many times in my youth I've sat in a, a service and just heard the people get beat up about how you're we're not we're just not getting out there and we're not saving enough people and we're just not we're not getting out there enough. Instead of building up the people of God, instead of telling, instead of telling all the people who are in, those who are within, building those people up, they're beating all the people up. Oh, we're just not getting out there, and we're not saving enough people. How how many people? How many people have you brought into the service this week? You know. Now, this being said, with all these church growth programs out there, I thought about this, and I want I want to propose a church growth program right here today. All right. 
Now, what if I told you that I had a church growth, church growth program that is guaranteed to grow your church up into a holy temple in the Lord? Yeah. That's right. What if I told you that this church growth program growth program is guaranteed to build you up together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. Yeah, it's called submitting yourself to the leading of the Spirit and letting Jesus, the apostle and high priest of your profession, do the job that he said he was going to do. How about that? He said, I will build my church. That's what he said, didn't he? So let him do it. That's what he said. So let him do it. Jesus said, I will build my church, and he is doing it. So submit yourself to the Spirit, and Jesus will do it. He will do it. In whom all the building fitly, fitly framed together groweth into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom also ye are builded together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. This is happening. This really is happening if you submit yourself to it. Uh, concerning this type of growth, Paul prayed this for the Colossians. He said, For this cause we also, since the day we heard of it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with all the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that ye might walk worthy unto the Lord, unto all pleasing. See, that this can happen. You can actually walk worthy of, uh, unto the Lord. You can actually walk worthy. This can happen. And to kind of put it in context, but Paul actually prayed this for the Colossians right after he had commended them for hearing of their faith and the love that they had for all saints. So he wasn't praying this to an obstinate and sinful people here. He, was, he, was praying for, he wasn't praying for the conversion of sinners. He was praying for faithful brethren. So, so, but he prayed for growth. He prayed for increase, and this is so. This is something that that is necessary. This is something that is expected because of the nature of the kingdom. This is the direction in which we are headed, and it, it, it is one that is a, a unified church in the full image of Christ Jesus. Amen. See, once we're in, that's not the end of it. Once we're in, there is so much more. There's, there, there are greater heights to be had. No matter where you're at in the kingdom, there are greater heights to be had. Amen. The true church is increasing. The ones that, who are in it are being perfected. Unlike construction in the world, the individual materials that make up the building, they, they never become anything better than what they were when the building was made. In Christ, after having been added to the church, see, we become stronger. Not only because we're part of the whole, but we, we ourselves, we actually increase. Now, this is the reason why we're not encouraged to become spiritual hermits. Uh, separating ourselves from everyone is not an advantage to ourselves. Now, it, it may advantage you in being separated from defiling influences in the world, but you still have an enemy within you. So you have need of the resources that God provides through his people. God chooses to make us go through certain circumstances in our lives. So sometimes as, as a means of teaching us something or some, something that we otherwise could not have learned had we not gone through it. So this is where the strength of the body becomes evident. And we've seen this happen in our assembly. Sometimes... Uh, a brother or a sister goes through something, and all of us can actually learn from their trial. We, we, don't, we don't have to go through the same thing that they had to go through, and we can all learn from it. This is, this is a blessed thing, a blessed experience. All of this is leading up unto the edifying of itself in love. Well, this also is, is a unique and remarkable design of the body of Christ, that it has been made to edify itself. And also, this is unlike any other structure as well. No structure in the world edifies itself. It has to be edified by an outside source. It has to be erected by an outside source. So this, edification that re, this is edification that results from this increase of the body. This is a confirmation that we've been given to be partakers of the divine nature. See, we're, we're able to behold Christ in one another. And as we're able to do so, we love one another with a love that can't be pretended or feigned. 
that this, that this love accomplishes something that could not otherwise be accomplished. This, this mutual edification that we experience, that with, uh, even here today, this is an experience that is exclusive to the children of God. And love for the believers experienced paramountly in Christ Jesus in fellowship with the body of Christ. It is the environment in which everything is to be done. See, we, we speak the truth in love. We love in deed and in truth. We, we consider one another to provoke unto love and unto good works. Uh, Paul said it this way, Fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. And in Colossians as well, that their hearts might be comforted being knit together in love. And the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one towards another. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love. See, seeing ye have purified your souls and obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. You see, this is the result of spiritual maturity, a love of, for those who belong to Jesus. This is not something that you have to command those who are, who are, who are mature in the faith. So, brethren, um, I hope that... Uh, I have very much enjoyed being able to see these things. This has been very good for me. I, I, I did want to say something during the um, sharing time that I hadn't, hadn't been able to say. I wanted to uh, cl close the end of my sermon, uh, be able to say this. Um, I want to thank all of you for, my prayer, for your prayers for me this past um, week. This past week has been rather difficult for me, and... Uh, it, it, it was a whole lot less difficult than I thought it was going to be. And the Lord gave me a whole lot of favor that just, I, I didn't expect it. That, 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 that um, job position that came out of nowhere, the Lord gave me a, an, an unusual amount of favor. And that's, it was, it was a, a, a position that I, you, uh, in my own natural ability, I would have never been able to do. And I had to I had to work this whole weekend, and I had a very very good day at work both days, and we made over a hundred percent efficiency, and I didn't have any trouble at all, and I didn't have any distractions at all, not even in one bit, and I was able to just I was actually able to see parables and things at work that I ordinarily wouldn't able wouldn't able to wouldn't be able to see, and so it was just a, it was just good, and so. I'm I'm very very thankful for this for this weekend and to be able to to, to see the things in this in this truth. So I thank you, brethren.